Mexico Frontiers. Presented by Veris Research. Hello, everyone, and welcome to New Mexico Frontiers, the digital series. I'm Chad Bremer. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so last time we were speaking with CNM about a, a quantum technology uh, lab that they are developing. Um, but CNM is just one component of this vast thing that is going on, not just even in New Mexico, but the Mountain West area. Uh, and it's an emerging technology that, uh, rightly so, the state of New Mexico really getting on board with. Um, and so we brought a couple of gentlemen in. You may recognize this guy from last time, uh, Jake Douglas. Um, but Alex Greenberg joining us as well. Um, let's, Alex, first tell us a little bit about yourself uh, and how the state of New Mexico is getting involved in this emerging technology. Yeah, the state of New Mexico is very excited about the opportunities that the quantum economy represents for us. Um, I'm the economic development advisor in the governor's office. I spent some time at venture capital, some time at an AI startup, and I was previously working as the director of the strategy or uh, the strategy science and technology office at New Mexico Economic Development Department. And this is by far the most exciting technology I've seen and one that we have unique core competencies in. I think that could make a really meaningful change for New Mexico's economy and become a net importer of talent among uh, quantum professionals all across the country. Okay. Uh, and if you weren't with us last time, Jake Douglas with Sandia National Labs. Jake, tell us a little about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I am the quantum business development lead for our quantum program uh, at Sandia. So I work with our R&D staff members, our leadership on things like uh, partnerships, communication, workforce development, uh, in this case, economic development, ecosystem development. So working closely with uh, some of the other national labs, so Los Alamos National Lab, AFRL, uh, our universities, and then folks like Alex and New Mexico Economic Development Department and, and things of that nature. Okay. Um, so obviously, New Mexico is, we, we are no stranger to technological development, right? We were, we were the home of, of the atomic bomb, the Manhattan Project. We have continued with Los Alamos National Labs through the years and Sandia National Labs. So we know technological development. And, you know, honestly, even though Bill Gates, they were up in Seattle, he was here in Albuquerque and working with MITS when he developed Microsoft and really took that off the ground. So even computer technology, we are, we are at the forefront why is New Mexico in 2024 primed to be uh, the the next great place when it comes to quantum computing? Because I would argue we're already the great place for quantum computing. Okay, there you go. Um, you mentioned it. We pioneered applied physics with the Manhattan Project. Richard Feynman, who was an intern on the Manhattan Project, wrote some of the earliest papers in the world on quantum computing. Right now, um, Sandia has an open access quantum computer, which is a novelty. UNM had the, one of the first quantum information science research centers in the entire world. And now CNM is building out their boot camp, which is going to be a first of the kind of the country. And so we have this uh, competitive advantage and head start in quantum R&D specifically. And I think we're poised really to take advantage of it going forward. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the uh, the jobs that may be out there. Now, last time in CNM, we were talking about getting people ready to, to step into this workforce. Once they are in this workforce, or maybe they are moving here to New Mexico, or they're here and they're they're thinking, what can I do? What kind of jobs exist in the world of quantum computing? It's really varied. And so a lot of the quantum computing research and development specifically is, is heavily PhD, but also a lot of you know, mechanical engineers. Um, but there's a lot of pick and shovels companies that are operating right now. One I like to think of is called Maybell Quantum up in Colorado, and they build what's called dilution refrigerators. So a lot of quantum computing has to be uh, proceeded in, in very cold temperatures near zero, zero Kelvin. And so uh, this refrigerator company effectively has about 80% of its staff that doesn't require a PhD. And I think that's the real opportunity for New Mexico, about a four to one distribution on a lot of these pick and shovel companies that won't require a PhD. Obviously, the advanced PhDs are going to be really necessary, especially with quantum computing. But a lot of the enabling hardware will be created by HVAC technicians, welders, um, you know, sort of mechanical uh, spaces all across the spectrum. And reading, too, uh, just a little bit about uh, the, the career when we're talking about some of these jobs, obviously, PhD jobs and higher level, but even, you know, the, the, the other jobs, I mean, these are all even lower level are still incredibly well-paying jobs, especially for New Mexico. Yeah, the average job right now in quantum pays $125,000 a year, and there's about three open positions for every qualified candidate in quantum. So we're talking about a huge market gap that needs to be addressed, and that's why we're so excited about the work that Sandia is doing through QCAMP and that CNM is going to be doing with the quantum boot camp to train workers for these uh, incredibly high-paying, sustainable, meaningful jobs. So, uh, Jake, first of all, I, when do you sleep? That's, that's one of the questions. But secondly, QCAMP, um, tell us a little bit about this, because this sounds like we're not even we're not even waiting for them to come to college. 
we're we're trying to cultivate interest in this even in in high school, middle and elementary school. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So so it's primarily focused on high school students and teachers where uh, we work with our, our scientists and physicists uh, to introduce quantum concepts, uh, quantum concepts at a very relatable level. Right. So if you think about you're in high school trying to decide what you want to do with your life, if you haven't even heard of something, how you're going to go into it as a career. Right. And so we've uh, found really fun ways to work with these students and teachers uh, to introduce the quantum concepts uh, with audiences across the state. Right. So from Hobbs and Farmington and Rio Doso and, of course, you know, Albuquerque and Santa Fe. Um, and we do it in a one week long uh, kind of introduction. Um, we're expanding out to three weeks for some teachers this year. Uh, our students are able to come spend a month with us. Uh, and it's designed with no prereqs. Right. So you don't have to have calculus to come learn about quantum. A little bit of uh, maybe algebra and we're going to go in and we're going to do hands-on experiments we're going to do puzzles we're going to teach you how quantum operates a little bit differently but still lets you do really amazing things right and if we want to grow that that broad diverse workforce that's going to come up with really innovative ideas it has to be with a you know a diverse set of people actually moving into the field so that's why you know we've been running q camp now for three years i've reached uh uh, over 300 people through that, which is exciting. It's continuing to scale and grow. Uh, working with CNM, like we talked about, on the technician pathway. Uh, we're working with our universities on building out four-year degrees, and you know places like UNM have put out, uh, I think, over 50 PhDs now that are running quantum companies across the world, right? Um, and we want on ramps and off ramps across all those. And uh, you know, to Alex's point, we want to bring all of those grads back here, right? We we want to drive this new sector in New Mexico in really fun new ways. And that's that's the other part too. Is is we train all these folks. We want to be able to to have employment here. We don't want to get them ready for this emerging technology, and then they they split off and they go somewhere else, and they're having their lives and their families elsewhere. We want to keep them here. Um, I I got to ask, what is the response when you're talking about high school kids and and getting into this? Because you know here I here I am well well past high school and college, um, and it's a little mind blowing to me. What is it like for a high school student? Are they digesting this? Are they excited about it? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, after taking the four week long course, they know more than I do. Right. And I've been doing this for six years um, and they're incredibly smart, incredibly receptive. Right. They they don't have to break bad habits like we might in our older age. Right. Um, but they um, at our last camp uh, at the end of it, we had our students present posters on the type of work they were doing. Right. So using um, quantum physics to to make provably secure communications and the students were able to go through and say exactly how that works right and right now we we don't have unhackable communications right but quantum gives us that opportunity and the students taught me all about it uh, through cube camp which was amazing that is absolutely incredible so kind of building on that idea of this excitement uh not just from the high school students but moving on uh alex we were talking about the importance of uh, of harnessing and developing this excitement to retain it um, how important is it for uh, for the state's governance to, to to harness this, cultivate it, and and build it into part of our, our ecosystem here in New Mexico? It's incredibly important. There's not many industries you could point to and say we have uh, best in the world research and development. And there's a lot of areas we're competitive in, from advanced energy to bioscience and aerospace. But quantum is something I could argue New Mexico is the best in the world at. From graduating the Nobel laureates. Um, to the, I mentioned sort of the history of innovation here and specifically with quantum sort of development in terms of R&D. And we're really exci excited about it as the government. And I would like to say that, you know, we held the quantum symposium a few weeks ago and then the governor spoke at it. Um, and she emphasized that it's going to be a big part of her agenda. And she recognizes the both the national security importance, which I think is a po uh, important sort of component of quantum development um, and that the state's going to be supporting it. Uh, you mentioned that, obviously, um, you know, with with so many global conflicts going on and a lot of uncertainty, any time that there was a transition, you know, from one uh, one presidential power to another presidential power, there there is sort of global uncertainty and it has nothing to do with politics. It's just the, the matter of, of, of fact. Um, where do you see the, the quantum and, and what we can develop here? playing into helping global security and and potentially, uh, you know, I'm not saying that it can, you know, stop conflicts, but that it can play into the United States safety when it comes to a, a, a global stage. And I'm definitely going to want Jake to weigh in on this one as uh, <laughs> the Department of Energy representative. But I, I think what he mentioned previously about QCamp, uh, that currently all classical computing relies on encryption. 
uh, encryption that's you know uses large prime numbers and multiplies them together to figure out what sort of the underlying encryption. And quantum computing has the potential to be so potent, so powerful that it's going to be able to break all classical encryption and effectively make it obsolete. And so obviously it's going to be huge national security importance that America reaches quantum computing first because we don't want um, the Chinese, for example, who are spending a fortune on quantum computing R&D to be able to hack into financial or government documents at any given time, uh, never mind the rest of the national security implications that quantum represents. Yeah, and thinking about, you know, other things that also matter to the state as well, right? So using quantum computers, we're going to be able to design new materials. So think new batteries. Uh, think about how we can make improvements across areas that New Mexico is already really interested in. Uh, new materials for spacecraft, for aircraft, uh, things of that nature. Uh, and uh, because of the, the fundamental nature and, and the fact that it's going to allow us to solve things in totally new ways, uh, there are applications across the board that are really critical for both national and economic security. And it's a case where there is really no second place, right? And that's why uh, the National Quantum Initiative was passed, which is a bipartisan supported all of government approach bill uh, in 2018. Uh, and that's been highly supported across uh, administrations. Um, and as we're, as we're looking at the, the different strategic national priorities, we have AI, we have advanced manufacturing, we have quantum, right? And, and there's really good reasons for that. And it's an area, like Alex said, where in New Mexico, we've been leading the way for decades, and if we can capitalize now, find a way to get industry here, uh, provide those new opportunities for New Mexicans, uh, it should have an amazing impact for our economy. Where do you guys see, um, in, you know, this? We, we can hope that it's going one place, but where do we really see uh, the growth in, in New Mexico, 5, 10 years, 20 years? Because I, I can't even, you know, con you know, conceptualize what that timeline looks like to develop it. But 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, where, how does New Mexico fit into this? Uh, so I, I think we could play a really important role. And so big picture, uh, there's analysis by Boston Consulting Group that projects that within the next 10 to 15 years, the quantum economy could represent about three and a half trillion dollars. So we're talking about huge numbers. And one to sort of take one step back and talk about uh, semiconductors right now. There's extreme national security importance for semiconductors. And there's uh, certain companies throughout the ecosystem that have an effective monopoly because of the research and development they put in. Uh, there's three companies that I always think about. Uh, ASML, which is a, a Dutch company that makes a device called Extreme Ultraviolet Lithography that's necessary for all advanced semiconductor manufacturing. It's so complex and so labor intensive that it costs about $200 million and it has 500,000 component parts. So it's not something anybody else in the world could do. It's Europe's biggest company and it's uh, not able to be replicated by others. And so that's a, that's a really significant choke point. And there's two other major choke points. Everybody uh, I'd imagine is largely familiar with NVIDIA. They've been sort of racing through the ranks. Uh, they have what's called you know, a fabrication facility that makes these advanced AI chips that nobody in the world can make. And so they have a near monopoly of maybe between 70 and 90% market share. Maybe that's a little off. Um, and then the last company is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, who actually uses their foundries to produce what NVIDIA designs. And they have an effective monopoly over this advanced semiconductor chips. And all that to say that these three companies combined have about a $4.5 trillion market cap. And nobody else could replicate their core capabilities. And we think the same kind of thing is going to happen in quantum. There's going to be these really meaningful bottlenecks and choke points in the quantum supply chain and the next generation of Microsoft, Googles, Amazons that come within quantum development. And we're dead focused on making sure one of them is here. Uh, so we could imagine what kind of job growth that would create, how that would impact the tax base, how that would be a gravitational full pull for import of talent all across the country, not just in quantum, but for the startups that are within their supply chain. And so we vote, uh, view it as, as maybe the most potent opportunity in, uh, in this generation. Jake, I think it, you said it perfectly earlier, is that this is something that there is no second place, that, you know, we, we want to be able to get there. We want to establish, you know, our, our roots there uh, before, as you said, before maybe other countries and, and really get in on the ground floor. Because I imagine, you know, thinking 70 years ago, 80 years ago, when, you know, the first uh, classical computer was being developed and People not understanding that will look where we are now. So I can only imagine a hundred years where we will be. Um, gentlemen, if, if we want to learn more about this, um, and we'll start with this at, at the state level, uh, Alex, where would you recommend folks go if they want to learn more about this and also about what New Mexico is doing to make sure we're number one on this? Yeah. Uh, so feel free to reach out to me at the governor's office. There's an inquiry form. If you just Google the governor's office, you could submit an inquiry. But also Nora Sackett, our, as our um, director of strategy, science, technology, and New Mexico Economic Development Department has largely been a thought leader in this space as well. And so I would encourage you to reach out to the Economic Development Department. 
And then finally, elevatequantum.org, where you can solicit inquiry if you want to be part of uh, what's already a 120 member organization coalition. Okay. And with Sandia, obviously, there's things that you can talk about, things you can't talk about with Sandia. But if we want to learn specifically about this, where would you recommend we go? Yeah, so www.sandia.gov slash quantum, uh, and you can learn all about the different things that we're, we're doing right now. Um, and also plug uh, the Quantum New Mexico um, project that we're working on uh, with UNM and partners across the state. And that's qnm.unm.edu. That is a very, that is the best website. It just flows very easily off the tongue. So very easy to remember. Gentlemen, thank you so much for the work that you were doing. This is really exciting stuff. And it really kind of feels that we are on the precipice of this next generation. And it's exciting to see that the land of enchantment is standing right there at the forefront of it. So uh, looking forward to the future. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. And thank you for joining us again. If you want more information on this, head over to krqe.com. We'll have all the information there. Until next time, I'm Chad Brummett. This has been New Mexico Frontiers, the digital series.